Would you like to accelerate your career and reach your full potential in just minutes a day? Welcome to the LeadX Show with New York Times bestselling author and Inc. 500 entrepreneur, Kevin Cruz. Hey everyone, Kevin Cruz here. Welcome to the Friday edition of the LeadX Leadership Show. Because it's Friday, it means it's also known as the Fan Mail Friday edition of the LeadX Leadership Show. It's also known as the Avengers Infinity War is totally overrated and I'm sticking to that opinion, even if it's just me. <laughs> that won't be my rant. That's the end of my rant for the week. In just a minute, I'm going to be taking questions, answering questions related to what is the right agenda for a one-on-one -on -one meeting, your weekly one-on-ones, what are five or six of my favorite leadership books, and how do you build your brand, your personal brand out there if you are an introvert, which of course I am. But before I tackle the fan mail, I want you to remember, go to iTunes, go to Stitcher, wherever you're listening to this podcast, just leave a quick rating, click some stars. It's the number one thing you can do for me to make sure this show continues to grow and find an audience. And of course, I have to remind you, if you're listening to this show, the day we've released it, the day will be May 25th, I think, <laughs> right around there. You've only got about a week to sign up for a one-year membership to the LeadX Academy at that crazy low pre-launch price of about $7 a month. Um, we just locked our pricing in on June 1st. I've been telling you it's gonna go to $25 a month. It's actually going to $30 per month. So this is like one fourth of what it's gonna be just days from now. What is LeadX? What is the LeadX Academy? Just go to leadx.org, sign in. You got a three-day free trial to check it out. You've got a big five personality assessment for self-awareness and discovery, over 250 video-based micro lessons, many of them personally that I teach on employee engagement, management fundamentals, productivity, et cetera, over a dozen different printable tools and worksheets, over 20 different webinars, a very cool experimental chat bot where you get to ask employee management questions, uh, leadership questions, and the chatbot answers you. It, this is crazy. This is like the, the biggest online learning platform, leadership development platform out there, and you only got a few days to get the official pre-launch price. And we're adding new content every week. Anyway, enough on that. Let me jump right to our first leader's question. Now, for those of you who've been following along last week, I talked about the difference between a coaching session and a one-on-one -on -one meeting with your with your team members. Well, the same person, Nikhil, uh, emailed back and said, thanks, and he says, I'm gonna be doing these one-on-ones with my team members. I'd like to know, is there a best practice to communicate the agenda for the meeting? I'm, I'm planning to have the initial meeting as a one-on-one -on -one where I explain the agenda. So how do you tell your team members that these one-on-ones are coming if you haven't been doing it? In the LeadX Academy, we actually have an email template, like a model email that you could just copy and paste and tweak and then send out. But the big picture items, if you're gonna communicate to your team is, first of all, tell all your team members at once. Otherwise, if you're like, hey, uh, Linda, I wanna start doing a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you. We'll start next week, blah, blah, blah. Well, she's gonna be like, why me? You know, What did I do wrong? Why am I the only one getting punished? So you just wanna let everybody know uh, that they're all you're, you're all in it together, not being singled out. Second, you wanna tell them why, because if you don't give them a reason why, they're gonna make up a horrible reason why. Oh my gosh, this is a weird practice. Maybe he's gonna to try to, Kevin's trying to figure out who to fire, so now we're gonna do these one-on-ones. Or maybe our whole department's gonna be let go, so he's trying to save it by doing some radical thing. Or Kevin's gone crazy, now he wants one-on-ones. So you just have to give a reason. What, what was the catalyst to start your one-on-ones? And it could be as simple as, Hey, you know, taking these courses in the LeadX Academy says it's a good best practice. I'm going to do it. Or, hey, was listening to this podcast with this funny, weird guy, Kevin Cruz, and he told me I should start doing it. Or I read a book or my buddy told me or my executive coach told me. And, hey, I am your buddy. I am your executive coach from afar. So any of those things would be true. Just explain why you're doing one on one meetings and then let them know that you want to hear from them. This is primarily 
their meeting. And so it's their chance to bring up anything that's on their mind, personal, work-related, red tape that needs to get cut, you know, whatever it is. So you give them that heads up. The other thing is you warn them and you say, in about four weeks, we're going to start holding these meetings because first thing that everyone's going to think is, oh my God, I do not have time for this meeting. And if you say, um, let's find time next week, well, next week, their calendar is already booked. They already have deadlines. They already know what they're doing. If you say, we're going to start this in four or five weeks, and then you send a calendar invite, you know, or say, hey, what's your availability five weeks from now? The odds are their calendar looks a lot less busy, and you're going to get a little less pushback on that time issue. So that's how you communicate one-on-ones that they're coming. What is the perfect one-on-one -on -one meeting agenda? I think it comes down to three questions. Question one, what's on your mind? And I used to do sort of like, you know, what's going on or something like that. But I found that I, that was very directive towards work, not personal and often project related. And you want to, again, the idea of a one-on-one, -on -one, it's to build the personal relationship, build relationship and improve communication. So nobody ever answers those engagement questions that they don't have the opportunity, you know, to give ideas and to talk. So by just saying what's on your mind, then it can be anything. They could tell you about trouble at home. They could tell you about projects that are going wrong. They could say so-and-so is being mean to me at work and whatever it is, it's just their time. So that's my first question. Now, 90 plus percent of the time, my team members go right to their project list and just kind of give me updates and ask questions and all the rest. But sometimes they come up with other things. Second question I like to ask. Now, often uh, like I, we use software called Basecamp. So this is sort of a weekly ping that we get in Basecamp. We all kind of answer together so we can see it, but most people don't, don't have that practice. Second question is, you know, what's your most important task for the week? Now, if you really want to become hardcore productivity guru, you're asking yourself every single morning, what is my most important task of the day? And then of course you're working on that as early in the day as possible. But by asking my team members, what's your most important task for the week? Like, yes, they've got a million things they need to do and all the rest, but it kind of forces them to say, this is the one thing that will move us, you know, towards our goals the most or among all these things, this one's a little more important than everything else. And um, usually it's just good for me to know and it reaffirms what I'm hoping to hear. And so other times I'll be like, okay, actually, I think that's an important thing, but more important than that is this other thing. So you, this is an alignment question. You're just making sure they know what's most important to you in terms of their, their workload as well. So it's an alignment question. Third question I always ask is, how can I help? That's it. How can I help? Once a week, I'm letting everybody know I'm practicing servant leadership. How can I serve them so they can accomplish their goals? Just so happens their goals align to my goals. But I ask, how can I help? And other ways you might ask that just to mix it up. What do you need from me, you know, to get your goals accomplished this week? Or what can I do, you know, to speed things up? What can I do to solve that problem you mentioned? How can I help? So that's it. You know, what's on your mind? What's your most important task? How can I help? And then in the final five to 10 minutes of the meeting, I like these meetings to be less than 30 minutes or 30 minutes or less. I will then kind of take back that final five minutes and be a bit more directive because often they will not have touched on a project or two or a follow up. I'm always taking notes during these meetings. So I'm always looking at what we talked about last week. And if they didn't circle back to something that's still an open issue, I bring it up. If, there's, if they've covered everything and we've got free time, I either just end the meeting or maybe I will give them a little bit of feedback or I'll communicate some business news, you know, company news that maybe they haven't heard. But that's it. Thank you for that question because I think one-on-one -on -one meetings, I mean, it was one of the critical things that I did that really turned my companies around from a couple of bankruptcies to a couple of multi-million dollar exits. And one-on-one -on -one meetings was a big part of that. Before I answer this leadership book question, I always get asked about like what's going on in the back office behind the scenes of building a tech startup. And I got to tell you, like I continue to be so pumped and optimistic. Like I'm like a young kid again. You know, this is 
I've done many startups. This is the most excited I've ever been. And we've been more or less in stealth mode for about 18 months. I mean, we've got the LeadX Academy online and it is really cool. Check it out. And we're working on some things that we haven't really shared, but we're getting ready to release uh, an, an enterprise app, an iOS app for enterprise in June. And uh, we've been hard at work on it. And just this week I saw the latest build and it's really cool, getting really close. And uh, that's why I keep saying, if you've got 10 or more managers that you want to train and develop on the hottest new <laughs> leadership development platform there will be, let me know because we're looking for pilot test customers to try things out with. Um, and in terms of business and creating massive value for everybody involved, you always want to be in a category by yourself. You want to literally have no competition. You know, when you're, when you're writing, and this works whether you're, like if you're a consultant, let's say you're a leadership consultant, it's the same principle. You wanna be the only one who does what you do. And you might say, well, how, you know, there's a million leadership consultants out there. There's a million training companies out there, whatever your, your thing is. That is true. And so you need to craft your positioning and your positioning statement in a way that you are the only one that does what you do, whether that's through a unique process, uh, a, a, a unique technology, a unique guarantee, you know, whatever it is, I go through this in all of our, our marketing training. And we finally just came up with sort of our, our own category. It's a new approach and a new category for professional development. I'm not gonna say what it is just yet. We need to get some pieces in place uh, to kind of seize that ground. But it's just so exciting. And this will be you know, so much bigger than anything uh, that, that I've done in the past. So just lots of excitement, lots of hard coding work, software work. Um, we're getting great feedback from the people who are already playing, playing with the system. We're gonna launch officially and publicly at the Life Science Trainers and Educators Network Conference in Phoenix in June, and then do a really big launch to the entire HR community at HR Tech in Vegas in, I think that's in September. Uh, so a lot of fun, a lot of fun stuff coming up. Uh, just tons of hard work and a lot of fun seeing, you know, the future unfold. Anyway, back to Fan Mail Friday. I got a question from, I don't know if I jotted, uh, I did. Darren said, <laughs> other than 15 Secrets and Employee Engagement 2.0, my books, <laughs> what are your top five to 10 leadership books? So I, you know, this is just kind of off the top of my mind, but I'm aided because um, I actually have a top shelf bookshelf. So you know that phrase, top shelf is like quality? Well, that's because like in a bar, <laughs> for those of you who are like me and you know enjoy a cocktail every now and then, you already know this, but if you're, you're not, if you don't go to bars, you know, top shelf is where they put the more expensive liquor. It's harder to reach. It's, uh, you know, you want the cheap stuff that everybody buys all day long, like at, at eye level or shoulder level, the expensive stuff that people don't rarely buy, you put in the harder to get area on the top shelf. Well, I kind of have that same thing in my office. Like I'm surrounded, three of my four walls, I'm looking around right now, are bookshelves and they're alphabetical by author last name. So I can just find a book I'm looking for if I remember the author's last name. But then there's one top shelf where I kind of put some of my favorite books that I just tend to reach for over and over again, or I'm you know, sending a copy to someone or whatever it is. And so when it comes to leadership and management, like the ones that are on my top shelf, it's What Got You Here, Won't Get You There uh, by Marshall Goldsmith. Great book, great book. And when I thought like I'd already fixed all my flaws and all the rest, oh, that book showed me I had a few more to work on. Uh, the book Radical Candor, uh, Kim Scott, for the longtime listeners, you know, I've spoken to her twice, big fan of Kim, Radical Candor, all about feedback. And, you know, we use a, we teach a little bit of a different model, BIG, Behavior Impact, Get Agreement, but her quadrants and the way she deep dives into it, it's all spot on. Another book on my top shelf is Multipliers uh, by Liz Weissman. You know, Liz, um, talk about creating 
your own category. So she's talking about leaders who get the most, get extra out of her, out of their team, uh, out of their team members. It's all about employee engagement, but like everybody, including me talks about employee engagement. My books are about employee engagement. Well, that's not unique. She comes up with her own term multipliers, leaders who engage their people. She calls them multipliers. And then the things that she teaches you to do are very similar to the things that I would teach you how to do, but it's a great book with, she just carved out that branding, picked a word, picked a category, and she's just crushing it. Another book that I think is phenomenal is Onward by Howard Schultz. So Howard Schultz is the founder of Starbucks. And, you know, he and I have kind of the same philosophies, political philosophies and things like that. And if you can get a good, like, there I was book, you know, first person account from an entrepreneur who cares about leadership. It's just great. Onward is that book. Now this strays into productivity, but it's productivity for managers. Uh, it's high output management, probably the most underrated or little known management book out there that I would recommend by Andy Grove, founder of Intel. You know, he's passed away, but great examples. Now he's an engineer. So this is a very much a like managers are evaluated on the output of their team. You know, this is kind of cold and analytical, but really not wrong and great insight. And then lastly, uh, mastering the Rockefeller habits from Vern Harnish. Now, Vern, it's my he's my number one favorite consultant. You know, I always read his newsletter. I say he's the guy that kind of saved us back at Conexa when we were on death's door looking over the cliff at bankruptcy. And then a couple of years later, we're, you know, a hundred million dollar company and IPOing and eventually sold to uh, IBM for over a billion dollars. I give credit to Vern and this book, Mastering the Rockefeller Habits. So it's, it's broader, it's about entrepreneurship, but it's about systems. Like how do you do a rhythm of communication on your team is one of the big takeaways. So those are great books that are on my top shelf. What do you like to read? Send me an email. I'm at kevin at leadx.org. I always like reading books. I like recommending books. I like inviting authors onto the podcast. So let me know uh, who you would recommend and I'll set up my summer reading. And then the last one uh, for today comes from Maureen. She says, thanks for the great work you're doing. The one thing holding me back is that I'm an introvert by nature. I love helping people and offering advice. However, I'm not by nature an extrovert nor a lover of social media. My challenge is how do introverts offer their services, build their brand and get their message out there in what is largely an extrovert world? Thanks, your suggestions will be welcome. I'm sure there are many introverts like me out there who would love this advice, Maureen. Okay, Maureen, I am a massive introvert. I feel like physical pain when I have to go to like a networking event or like interact with people and leave my little hermit cave. So I'm with you, Maureen. And I think most people would say I've done a decent job of building a personal brand and audience and, and monetizing it over the, the years. So first thing I would say is I wrote a whole book on this. It's a, the book that nobody ever buys or knows about. It's called Text Me, Snap Me, Ask Me Anything. And that title is so horrible that I'm going to actually reissue the book, same exact book with just a, a better title. Like, I have no idea, but the title will be like, How to Become Rich and Famous as a Consultant. <laughs> and then I think people will buy the book, but the recommendations inside the cover will be the same. And that is basically, you build your brand, you build your network by helping people. You just need to help people. The more value you give, the more value will come back. And so my practice is, you know, everybody that sends me an email, I personally answer it. And, you know, sometimes I'm late. I'm sure I've missed some or something over the years, but like pretty much like every day I'm answering emails one by one. I'm trying to offer help along the way. Um, if you don't get people already emailing you every day, you can go onto those social networks and not to tell them what you had for dinner or what you're wearing or taking selfies. You just join like a LinkedIn group. Like I've got the wholehearted leadership group on LinkedIn with 49,000 members and you can proactively post advice and information about your area up into that group, or you can leave comments and ask questions and answer people's questions when, when they post. So you're just offering people help. You just need to think about who is my audience? Where do they hang out? How can I help them? 
And so, you know, look, maybe your audience hangs out at public libraries. So you want to go and uh, set up a table to help them or put your articles out on the table at the public library. Maybe they hang out at flea markets. So you need to go to flea markets and help people at flea markets, whatever it is. It is true that social media is a great way to find your tribe and to offer help. But that's it. Um, and, you know, as it, if you don't want to interact with people at all, write an article and then post it online, you know, post it on Medium, post it on LinkedIn. You're offering help to people who will find your article. And, and that's it. I mean, you know, advanced strategies, record a video and post it on YouTube or record a podcast and put out a podcast. Um, other than having to talk to four guests a month, I don't have to interact with that many people. <laughs> I get to be an introvert here in my basement uh, as a podcaster. So anyway, that's, that's it. You know, it's just where are your people hanging out, offer help over time. If you help one person a day, you're going to have 365 raving fans at the end of the year. You offer help to 10 people a day, you're going to have over 3,000 raving fans at the end of the year. You do that year after year after year, and you know the, it's a numbers game. They're going to come back to you when they want to hire a coach. They will buy your book when you issue your book or whatever it is that you're you're offering. That's all I do. I just try to offer help, just try to be helpful. And that's it. So, hey, on that note, all of you out there, I'd love to answer your questions about leadership and management, productivity, entrepreneurship, anything that you want. Ask me anything, as they say, AMA. Uh, so shoot me an email with your questions, comments, feedback, kevin at leadx.org. If social's your thing, I'm on Twitter, at Cruz, K-R-U-S-E is Cruz. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Kevin Author. I'm on Facebook. My Facebook page is Cruz Author. And uh, again, for all of you who have left a rating or review on iTunes, let us know. Send an email, info at leadx.org. Say, yo, I just left you a rating on iTunes. And then Jackie's going to send you this double top secret link to our VIP program on Facebook. We've been giving out like, gosh, I mean, we did two or three contests in the last week, giving out five books at a time, uh, other kinds of prizes. So join us and um, have some fun. Get a built in support network for for yourself as well. Friends, I hope you have a great weekend. And remember, leadership is influence. It's not a choice. You're always leading just in a good direction or a bad direction. So the question once again is, how are you going to lead today? <laughs>